So I think the reason why people are so captivated by the Highland cattle is um, just they're, they're just majestic beasts. Beautiful hairstyle, you know, the horns, it's a bit of a mystery to them. <laughs> Got featured in a tabloid. Yeah. I mean, it was a cute story, <laughs> but... Total lies, yeah, you know. Yeah. It was like meet the farmers yeah. who cuddle their cows, you know. Yeah, it's all made um, up. She's so warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm Adam Hobson. I'm Emily. <laughs> and our home is Burnsville, North Carolina. Yeah, You're an attention hog. We raise Highland cattle. Um, here in Nancy County and Mitchell County, and we sell them to hobby farms essentially uh, all across the United States and internationally. So, do you yeah. have a certain call that you do? Something? Yeah, we'll just sue cow, but a lot louder. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was a pig call. Yeah. Is no. that a pig call? It's it's yeah. it's actually it's a it's a type of yodel, okay. and it was it came from the Swiss Alps. It was the, the origins okay. of it, and it's just kind of mountain tradition. This area is really good for highlands because um, it's so similar to the geography and the top, topography of Scotland, and we have very similar weather here. We have a very mild summer, pretty mild winter. We're content to just go sit in the pasture with them for hours and just watch them. I mean, they're just so quiet and easy going. And I think that kind of translates to other people. Um, they kind of live vicariously through our photos and videos. And I mean, it just brings a peace and a calming effect to people. It's the sweetest. This is all Emily does all summer. Let me prop that up just for a second. So we first got into Highland Cattle in uh, 2014. Um, Adam had lost his job and uh, was just looking for, you know, direction. He'd been praying about what he was supposed to do next. And I've always wanted one for a pet. So I just started looking online. Um, originally we were gonna buy two or three and we went to look at them and we picked out a few. And he's like, oh, I'll make a deal on all of them. And we're like, what are we gonna do with 24 cows, you know? and we ended up getting two big trailer loads of cattle um, the day that we were finishing our fence up. Yeah. Um, and then, so we put them in the pasture and we wake up the next morning and all the cows are gone, every last one of them. <laughs> Got them all back in and then re-fixed the fence and I patched it with just old wood pallets. And I left it that way, just you know, kind of as a reminder to me to, you know, to, to keep your fences fixed. You just fix a fence however you can at the time. Come on. Come on. Let's go. And we've had, you know, over three, maybe even 400 head of cattle total in that amount of time. You're such a baby. And we realized very quickly that we're not going to be able to do beef. Like, we're way too attached to these animals. Best friends forever, huh? We had never had any intentions of like trying to be popular or to grow any kind of internet success or whatever. It just all happened organically and like we just kind of like hung on and were like, what is going on here? During that whole period of time, it was really the first transition of the farm. Uh, we started getting a lot of emails and phone calls and things. We had kind of started like a Facebook, Instagram page at that, that time. We had one photo. And so I was holding it up, he kind of had his legs propped up and had my hands around him. And um, afterwards, looking at the picture, I'm like, man, this thing looks like a teddy bear. Like, we need to put this on the internet. And sure enough, the afternoon, um, we had a viral photo. It, it, it'd be really impossible to tell how many views, but it was in the hundreds of millions. We didn't do it intentionally. That, that's just how we interacted with them. Um, I don't know, I was always, you know, just petting and brushing them. So that's kind of when our business took off, starting to sell a lot of cattle. So we got invited to a lot of events. So we've taken cows many places across the United States. 
On the way home, uh, we typically, as a treat for the cows, we'll take them out to the beach. Um, and it ends up being a treat more for the beach goers than the cows themselves. And just, I mean, there's so much negativity out there. And it's just nice to be able to share a little bit of hope and a little bit of light to people, you know, just even through a fuzzy little cute cow. It's not about making money, it's just, I don't know, it's just about loving what we do. I don't think we'll ever be rich from doing what we're doing. It's enjoyable, it's an enjoyable way to live, and it, I mean, it makes me happy. And I think it's the same with Emily. Yeah.